Well, Kyle, it's time for everyone's fan favorite YouTube content. Creators reacting to other creators. Now, to be fair, this is the most requested video series we've ever had. The Joe Cat Adventuring Guides, Crap Guides. I'm familiar with them from the D&D sphere, but I didn't know they actually made Final Fantasy XIV content. So, as clearly extremely seasoned players now getting to the middle bits of Stormblood patch content, it's time for us to take a look at some guides. Uh, I've never seen these. I've watched very little Final Fantasy XIV content. You know, we're only up to Stormblood at the time of recording this, and I don't want to be spoiled. Uh, you haven't seen these either? No, in fact, I'm really, really careful, like you, to avoid any spoilers, including visual spoilers that some guide might have of fighting some boss I haven't seen. So this is going to be perfect. It's kind of a cartoon-style thing. All I know is people find them funny. And helpful. So today, Kyle, we, we level up our understanding of references a lot of people in the Final Fantasy XIV community make. Should have made popcorn for this. What up, Warriors of Fartness? I bet you don't have the slightest clue how to play this eyeball-melting anime game. Oh, sure, you probably know that you can beat up enemies by clicking on them until they die, but do you know how to find a static in your FC to help you prog uwu? I bet you don't even know what any of the- Okay. <laughs> First of all, I had no idea there was a face in the Chocobo hat. Oh, oh, there Second is. Thing. I didn't either. <laughs> Kyle, uh, I don't know what uwu means, and at this point, I'm afraid to ask. I think it's a cat thing, like an anime cat thing. I think it, uh, my guess would be it's because you have the two eyes, the closed eyes of the U's, and then the W make the cat face. So uwu is just the pronunciation of an emoticon. Right, exactly. Okay. Like lol became lol, mm, okay. except just, for it's also a face. I just want to make sure that I drain all humor from this. The, the static thing has always been kind of an outside phrase. I'm not really sure where that started. I know Yoshi P in his own videos has referred to his progression rating as a static, but it's a really weird terminology coming from World of Warcraft. So sit down, shut up, and eat your gissel greens, because I'm going to teach you what thee may hap not knoweth thy noobliness. Welcome to a crap guide to Final Fantasy. <laughs> Kazoo. I love all Kazoo colors. I love Kazoo colors. The person covers. in the front lines of every group, leading the charge to inevitable party wipes, which is because you are the most important person in the party, having slap fights with the boss since everybody else is way too squishy to handle the puss pounding patty cake. You'll never see yes, Jimmy. Yes, this is some exactly what tanks are. <laughs> yes, Joe Cat gets it. I am the most important. I think that tanking is a wonderful way to start this game. I know a lot of people would rather start in DPS, exploring other jobs, but the community is so welcoming and so understanding when that sprout pops up in their Sestasha. I think tanking makes you feel like the main character, particularly when a realm reborn's a little crunchy. I think starting as tank is the best way to start this game. No, I don't. I don't think I agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. Like, I guess they recently fixed the greatest defenders. But when I started playing before the uh, 6.1 update, the earliest dungeons are the ones that are the easiest to get lost in. And having to lead mm. through that as a tank. No, I completely disagree with you, Kyle. Uh, no, I wish that on. I wish that on no one. That's fair. I straight up invited my friend to run me through Thousand Maws of Totorok because I was scared to go in there <laughs> and leave the party. <laughs> <laughs> I, st I still get dungeons to this day from A Realm Reborn that I go in and I'm like, I know I've been here. I'm not sure I've ever tanked it. I have no idea where I'm going. I like being in the boss's crotch, though. I like being the one that it's angry at. I think with the trust slash support system we have right now, it's a little slow on tank. It's kind of laborious. The AIs don't exactly bring the heat. I've, I've never tried it, so I can't speak to that. But like, yeah, I don't know. Part, part of the joy of tanking for me is playing with real people and, and leading that charge and doing that. I think if you come from other games and you like tanking, that yeah, you could probably jump right in and be fine. But if you've never tanked before, I don't think I would recommend it as the very first thing that you do in this game. But hey, you do you. Find your own fun. I'm bringing my own trauma from Wailing Caverns and being yelled at. So yeah, Final Fantasy <laughs> seemed really nice day one when I started tanking. Buff boots eyeing up the cloud of darkness with his 2 by 4 and scriggly tree branch. But how hard can tanking be? Turn on your tank stance, do your one two three combo and blame the healers when you die, right? That sounds like somebody who yep, needs their short Q accurate. privileges revoked. Firstly, yeah. tank stance. You turn this on to start gaining enmity. What's enmity? It's where you shout at the bad guys, hey, hit me! They'll be paying attention to you so long as you're dealing damage. So you better be dealing damage and not just having a staring contest. If you... Okay, someone who has tanked a lot <laughs> in World of Warcraft, do you like enmity? 
do you like just the button and activatable buff? That means you always have aggro. In theory, yes. I hate that it resets after every single dungeon. Also, can I say, I don't think there's a single word in this game I hate more than enmity. I can't hmm. say it. I can't say enmity, Kyle. Enmity. I call it my threat generator. No one so far gets mad at me, and that's how I'm going to continue living my life. I get that you have to clear all the buffs. Like, you might have, I don't know, world buffs, food buffs, or whatever when you get in there. And so it's like, nope, fresh instance. Come on, uh, clear all the buffs. Reactivate them if you need to. Quality of life update for the future. Just leave the tank buff on. Just, I forgot just, it a lot, just, too. Just leave it on. Just leave it on. I, I like being able to turn it off. As anyone who watches uh, when we do Palace of the Dead, Kyle can aggro some things. I don't have to be tanking this. I don't see the big point, even though it makes our some people in our chat very, very irritable. But that's... That's strategy. You're literally increasing your health bar by virtue of my health bar existing. I think that's perfectly yeah, I've fine. I've still got provoke. If things get yeah. hairy, if something's like about to ace you, I've still got provoke, providing I'm paying attention. If you don't, then they're going to start indiscriminately charging at the rest of the party like a dog in a movie theater. <laughs> if you are the designated main tank or in a light... What are dogs doing in movie theaters? Sure this is on. <laughs> if there is another tank in the party and you are the off tank, make sure this is off. Unless there's some other bad guys you gotta pull. If you have conflicting stances with the other tank, they will chuck their shoulder pads at you. <laughs> as a tank, you should make sure the bad guy's ass is facing the party as often as possible, as indicated by the bright, glowing, half-eaten donut underneath the target. <laughs> this is so that if the bad guy sneezes, oh. you're the only one getting down with the sickness. That is all I'm gonna refer to that as from now on. I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't know there was a little arrow. They, they explain it. What? What's the? What's the realm reborn arena you go do, and you get a full set of armor when you complete all of the various trials? Oh. They explain that there's directions, and you can get uh, like damage incentives if you attack from behind, and that's when they show. That's when they explain that opening in the back of the half-eaten donut. You didn't pick that up. You've tanked. No. Well, it's got a face. Like, I, I can't think of a, a single boss outside of the slime in Copper Bell Mines that doesn't have a straight up face. And even that kind of does like a bend in your direction when it slaps you. I, I mean, I would I, I guess it's not the most important thing to know that it has an arrow. Uh, it's going to turn towards you. The Hall of Novice was extremely early on. I did that in what, 2018. I didn't know there was a hole in the back that was for my directionals. That's actually really helpful. I apologize. I frequently forget that you were playing this game for like three years very casually before I started playing. Yeah, very casually. That's why you should do the free trial so you don't have to pay for the uh, subscription when you fart off. I realize there's a disclaimer at the front of this video that says this is not educational, but like, I've, you know, you learned something. So far, we've learned things. So if your party has anyone playing any jobs that particularly likes to clap them cheeks, you provided a bright, shiny spanking space. On top of this, as a tank, you are, by Heidelin's blessings, horrible at dancing, which is why you should move as little as possible once you've got the enemy's attention. Oh, that way the party can that. continue to whap the wumpus without having to chase down the bad guy's glorious booty. Just as well, because you have control of where the baddies are, you control how useful everybody else is. So if somebody puts down a useful AoE, stop running away from it. Now that you have the baddies' attention and are in a nice, cozy, poking position, you don't have to worry about anything else, right? Ah, that's what I thought you'd say, you dumb Horse. Believe it or not, when you die, it's not entirely the healer's fault, just mostly their fault. That little bit of responsibility you have is based on how well you can juggle mitigate. <laughs> <laughs> L listen, if I'm, a, if I'm in a dungeon where I know the mechanics, I will I will admit I agree with this this graph. When you and I do raids. For the first time, a min-eye level as a stream event, and we go in blind without having researched anything, this is not me. <laughs> this graph does not represent me. <laughs> I am aware it is probably my fault. Well, that's like tank busters and stuff, right? Like, that I can't mitigate, at least as an astrologian. I do agree with this graph, though, when it comes to a normal dungeon. Like, if you die, it's because I personally farted off because I have on cooldown heels and off cooldown heels. And at least one of those should be flying at you regularly. I think one of the most common uttered phrases when you're healing me through dungeons on stream from me is, I could tell. And it always follows you explaining why you were distracted. <laughs> nice bosses, environments, DPSing. There's lots of reasons your healer can become distracted. Playing cards as an astrologian, it gets busy. Reading chat, thinking about triple triad, yeah. looking at those cheeks that you're clapping. Yeah, 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 sometimes. I don't think we... Oh, no, no, no. That was uh, the Void Arc. Void Arc had a, a, a butt boss. 
For the most part, the boobs are more prevalent than the butt, though, in Final Fantasy XIV. My favorite thing in this video so far was Bahamut with butt cheeks. What's mitigation? It's the buttons that make the bad guy's slaps hurt less that you sometimes press once a subscription and never think about again. You ever wonder why you have several of those buttons that all seem like they do the same thing? Well, that How do you feel about the mitigation in Final Fantasy XIV coming from World of Warcraft? Uh, I haven't spent enough time with another... Ta well, I guess I, I played a decent amount of Gunbreaker. I was surprised but okay with the fact that a decent amount of the mitigation is shared. Like, the abilities are the same... Yeah, like, actually, this is a great graph. The the three abilities on the left, uh, we all have these. Um, that bottom one, I totally use constantly and don't forget and don't currently have bound to a key that I use <laughs> frequently. It's so easy to forget about arms laying. When you dodge a knockback, you feel like a badass. The slow aspect of it, super easy to forget. It makes your survival active, which I do like. Uh, you know, as someone who has played every single tank class in World of Warcraft except for Druid because I just don't want to be a bear. Dark Knight might be my favorite tanking experience I've had. And that, and that's a high thing. This isn't me like saying like, wow, it was bad or anything. Like, I love tanking in WoW. I also love tanking in Final Fantasy XIV, but I really like Dark Knight and I just got Blackest Knight, which it's just freaking cool. There's so much room for your knowledge of the fights and the boss's abilities to, to become a boon to you. Uh, once you unlock uh, Blackest Night. I'm a level 56 Paladin, which is what I did for all of A Realm Reborn. And I really like the smaller cooldown so you could actually use your mitigation on trash, which made your DPS go faster because your healer could also DPS because you're taking less damage and kind of how that worked back into the group itself. I remember a lot of times, particularly like Gruul's Lair, we had to all sit and wait while we waited for the tank to get off a long cooldown like shield wall and that was what half an hour or something absurd like that way back in the day yeah shield wall was ridiculous i'm just gonna screenshot this screen right here and have a little cheat sheet about all the mitigation for all of the different classes and also it's just like it's making me think of how i've bound these buttons have ever told you about my uh declining degrees of f hotkeys as a tank. <laughs> what? So F is my hotkey for a lot of important things to uh, uh, not die or make other people not die as a tank. And it's because okay. uh, there's no other way to say this without having to censor myself in the edit, which is varying degrees of me shouting. <laughs> that works. So yeah. the first level of is I need to taunt. So taunt is always on F. But T's right there. T is always stun because it's something I do regardless of whether I'm tanking or not. Okay. If a class, all right, all right. I'm, if I'm a class or a job has a stun, I put it on T. Uh, interrupt is always shift T. It doesn't matter. But the next degree of f is super f which means I'm going to die. <laughs> so I usually put a serious damage mitigation ability on uh, shift F. Shift because you're capitalizing the F. Yeah, okay. Yeah, is, I like the system. Yeah, I call yeah. it super f the I, I always forget the name of the ability, but the example on my Dark Knight is the one that uh, if you die, you don't die <laughs> and you can get healed back up. Uh, that's control super. F so it's control shift. F. OK, wow. So this really is an F system. I thought we'd be going into like giga fucked and hella fucked as you made your way across <laughs> the keyboard. I didn't realize that you were this dedicated to the F key. That's do you not use a, a oh, shit, I just dropped it. Do you not use like a. A gaming mouse, like an like one with the with all the little buttons. I I used to, and then I stopped because I didn't like how many buttons there were. <laughs> so no, I just have two thumb buttons. <laughs> now the two thumb buttons are also bound, and then there's a shift variant of them and a control shift variant of them. So I essentially have six buttons off of the two buttons on my mouse. I think your screen would look more elegant than mine because I basically have this huge block of abilities that looks like I don't give a damn about them. It's the Kyle grenade. I have a name for it. I've just never told you it. Yeah, it's very much that. Very much that. But they're all very important to me. I love them all equally. All my children. Well, that's because you're supposed to space them out over the course of a fight so the healers don't have to sacrifice their entire mana pool and firstborn child to get your frail ass through the dungeon. Rem all right, that was the other mistake I made when I first started playing is I would hit all the buttons at once. And a very, very nice astrologian actually told me to stop, damn it.
Remember not to bust your tanking load all at once, or else you're gonna feel a lot of shame when you're all out of juice. That's in the so boss crude. To go about four that's, more rounds. Every me. tank also has a press X to not die button that can be used to survive any devastating attacks. Or if you're a Living really dead. aggressive Woo. paladin who drew every enemy in a dungeon ever and don't want the healer to hire a hitman on you. As for what your limit break does, tanks are thicker than the average Disney mom to the point your honky chonky donkey bahonky extends to the rest of the party, protecting them from damage up to a whopping 80% at LB3. The thing is, unless you're a high-end player, you'll probably be using tank LB as frequently as a good player rolls high on loot. Overall, you have four flavors to choose from. Punk, grunge, metal, and Christian rock. There's warrior for big axes, big anger, big self-healing, and if you like to do fell cleaves, again and again and again and again. If you prefer more brooding than cruding, the Dark Knight is great for doing your best guts impression. You get a huge-ass sword, goopy black energy particle effects, and the literal best mitigation in the entire game, but it's balanced because they get the worst invulnerability button in the entire game. You press it, and then it makes you die. Gunbreaker is called the tank, but everybody knows it's just three DPS in a trench coat as designated by the fact you get a f gun and your swings explode. But well, you have to be a hardcore gamer since it requires a lot of cartridges. And finally, the paladin, who tries to pretend they're a healer and caster, but only when the other healers and casters are looking. But f all that because the most important thing is that you get the mother sword and shield, baby! Hell yeah! That, that's why I like the paladin. I hate the paladin story. The name paladin, it should be like royal guard. This is not your holy avenger warrior type. But the shield and sword look so good in Final Fantasy, and the abilities are so flashy on melee. It is the, the, the job I want the most that I want to level the least. Absolutely. I think Paladin is one you should go back to and level via side content like Wondrous Tales and other catch-up mechanics. Like, don't do it as your main. Do not level as Paladin. It was so slow. It was actually <laughs> kind of miserable. Any kill thing quest is really slow. And we did those duties side by side on our stream. And you always just like sped ahead so far on Dark Knight. Dark Knight does so much DPS by comparison. Also, when I was healing, same thing happened. Like, it's really, really nice to do MSQ as a DPS or I guess a, a Dark Knight, apparently. Getting behind this wall of holiness, bitch. Now you know <laughs> how to play tank. You're welcome. <laughs> I I am going to make that kazoo music the ringtone for when you call me, which is unfortunate because you never call. I'm sorry, Garrett. <laughs> so you've now been tanking in Final Fantasy XIV for about nine months. Uh, basically since the very start of Heaven's Ward. So when did our first Heaven's Ward video come out? Okay, so you started as a summoner. I did start as a summoner. I did not tank in A Realm Reborn. So why'd you switch off? To tanking, then was it just you fell in love with Dark Knight and well, kind of stuck a toe in the water and went, "Oh my goodness, Dark Knight's cool." <laughs> You're basically right. Yeah. Well, we had had that conversation where we were like, maybe it would be cool if we swapped what job we were maining every expansion, which I don't think I'm going to do anymore. By the way, I like Dark Knight that much. <laughs> um, okay. Wow. Um, I'm looking at Shadowbringers and I'm like, no, I'm staying as a Dark Knight. <laughs> It's called Shadowbringers. Being a Dark Knight for it sounds badass. It sounds like the right choice. It is one of my favorite classes in any MMO that I've played. It So much of it is, is aesthetic for me. It shouldn't be a surprise. If you watch us talk about dungeons, you know how important it is to me that a dungeon just looks cool and, and plays to sensibilities that I like. Growing up, I wore my Darth Vader costume constantly. Uh, hit high school, started playing Warcraft 3. I thought Arthas and Death Knights were the coolest thing ever. Haven't really been a Death Knight in World of Warcraft because I don't think they actually nailed a fantasy. They did in the early days, but I was really into the other my other mains in that game, which doesn't make it easy to switch classes. And then when I did move over to, to Death Knight, I, I didn't like him anymore. Another MMO like uh, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, I played a Sith Warrior, and I loved it. That original yeah. Sith Warrior like quest line, like the story that plays out in The Old Republic, which feels like classic Bioware... It's amazing. It's some of the most fun I've ever had in a game, and, and I like the abilities in there a lot. It was really pure. It was a really good storyline. I played Inquisitor, and it was a lot messier. Yeah, yeah. And so World of Warcraft is really the only place where I break from this, but it's really because, to me, the fantasy of being a Death Knight, specifically tanking as a Death Knight, did not land. I cannot stand blood Death Knights. I think they are super boring. I don't like playing them. With all that out of the way, Dark Knight in Final Fantasy XIV is like, this amalgamation of everything I like about emo plate wearers. It's, it really worked to me. It's like the, the simplest answer is it's blood tanking as a death knight. If it was actually cool. Damn. 
but it also gives me weird flashbacks to playing a Sith warrior that I can't really describe because it's not like you have a force choke. I mean, hell, uh, I think Death Knights in World of Warcraft actually have something that's more akin to a force choke. But it's just, I feel like a big marauding badass. I mean, how much of that is the leap? And I think that's what Sith Warriors had. The leap is so fun as a yes. tank. Charging in World of Warcraft, like leveling up to the point, I think it was 20 or so back when I played heavily, was laborious before you got charge. Charging is so much fun. 90% of my joy in Samurai is the engage, disengage. And specifically, like, leaping in, that where, like, you have a target, you're in range, and now the game is just going to make you look cool as you get to where you're going. I really like, say, in World of Warcraft, the charge horse that Paladin's got. It is cool. It's super unique. But you actually need to control it. I I think it's cooler when it just does it for you and you know that you're going to end up exactly where you want to be. Mobility is always fun. Mobility is always fun in any game that has satisfying mobility. And tanks in Final Fantasy XIV have just that. At least the ones I've played a decent amount. Gunbreaker and Death Knight both have very fun engages. I have played some Marauder. And the storyline is pretty fun. It's a bit wacky. I like the big axe. I'm not really sold on the fantasy. I, I'm, I've I'm. i never been an axe fan, so that's part of the reason I haven't even looked at the direction of a marauder. The axes can kind of get big hammery, and I like big hammers too, so I, I, I don't like... I'm all I, right with... That's, we've never had this conversation. I don't like either of those. I hate big hammers, and big axes do very little for me, except for when I'm playing like an orc or something. Anyway. You've tried a lot of Gunbreaker. I did. That was so in... um. When we started Stormblood, we we decided to change jobs again, and I went to Gunbreaker because I don't come from a background of Final Fantasy, but I've always thought Squall looked cool. (laughs) Like, that's it. I remember being a kid when Final Fantasy VIII was coming out. You know, he's stuck in the grocery store with mom, go over to the magazine rack, look at the video game magazines, and Squall being on the cover looking like the coolest bastard that ever lived. I know basically nothing about the character other than what happens in Kingdom Hearts. (laughs) I just think he looks cool. So I I gave it a shot, uh, pun intended, and it's okay. It's not my favorite. It's, to me, surprisingly similar to Dark Knight in in how it feels. I hear it gets a lot more involved at 70 and kind of differentiates itself more. But the whole time, I was just missing my Dark Knight. And I still want to level my Paladin. I think the armor sets that are shared across all the tanks are gorgeous, The plate in this game is so sleek and thin rather than big and bulky. There are the big bulky sets like the Allegan sets sometimes get a little wide boy, but I really, really like the look of it. I love the sword and shield. It is such a classy look for a tank. It's such a classic look for a tank. I want it to be my main if I ever go down that road. You know, as someone who tanked a lot in World of Warcraft but never got into Death Knight, Sword and board is really a big thing for me. I've spent most of my time tanking in that game as a warrior and as a paladin. Also, I was the perfect age for the movie 300 when it released. So when he's doing the run and blocking the stuff and flipping the dude over the shield, the single shield slam in that extended speed ramping sequence. Nothing on earth makes shields look cooler. And I include Captain America in this. Nah, dude, I love, I freaking love shields. I might, I might like being my, you know, big sword metal looking bastard tank, but I've spent most of my time in MMOs tanking with the shield. Got a soft spot in my heart for him. Really for me, it's just the visuals that Final Fantasy 14 allows the tanks to be as flashy as even a spellcaster. That's something as minute as putting up your shield and negating damage has a visual that makes you feel cool. The muteness of the abilities in World of Warcraft for tanks makes perfect sense in a system when you can't turn down, negate other people's visuals. It's very important that your tank isn't overloading the rogues with their current shield ability. I see why people like these Joe Cat videos. Th- this is such a tight script. It is so rapid fire. It's it, it's a joke every like four seconds. And it lands. Well, if you enjoyed us reacting to this video, you should definitely go over to Joe Cat and like and subscribe if you haven't already. Although I feel like from how many people have suggested that we go and react to this, that it sounds like you've already seen it. But maybe you go give Joe Cat an extra view. Go throw a like Joe Cat's way. 
And if you liked us reacting to this, let us know because we could do more reacts videos. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. We have brand new videos every Wednesday morning for you, and we stream every Monday afternoon and Thursday evening. And it's all right here on the Grinding Gear YouTube channel. So hang out here with us, and until next time, GG.